Well, welcome back to Digger Detecting, everybody. Welcome also back to our brand new permission, that being the old house site that uh, Andrew helped us get onto uh, by speaking to the lady named Helen that day. Uh, look, it's, uh, it's a bit of a rainy day coming to today. Uh, we've got the eye of the storm off behind us, uh, but look, uh, we're gonna make the most of it. We've got the Equinoxes out here. Andrew is running the Equinox 800, and I'm back on the Equinox 900. And some remember just how much success we've had here in the last uh, two rounds. So the first round, I did not film anything. However, the second round, uh, where we were hunting here the other day, uh, we were pulling out a mass amount of wonderful old cow tags. Cows, there they are, and uh, not those guys tags though are tags from well over 100 years ago are from the old common roadside grazing so that's what we're back looking for again today we got 12 out of here in the last two visits and we're looking for that extra tag today who knows maybe we get lucky and find one however as said I generally you only find about four to five at each house site uh, so look, I'm going to be looking for the coins and the cow tags, uh, but mainly concentrating on the coins today, as we've really not found too many in the past. So anyway, let's get set up, let's get started, and um, let's see how we go. Well, we've managed to locate our first nice signal, and uh, one that we're going to give a dig. As you can see, uh, we've got a 68, 69, even up into the 70 range there. However, before we get started on that dig, there is something very special in my pouch that I want to share and show off which you would have seen on video there the other week. And uh, that is the brand new MindLab ProFine 40. Look out. So this is the bad boy that we're gonna be using in all our uh, future videos. And I cannot wait to see how it performs and what it can do. I remember we've got the five bars of sensitivity and not only that, the on-site demand or on-demand retune calibration button. So look, let's dig this target out and uh, let's turn that pinpointer on uh, for its very first target. And let's hope it's something good. Let's hope it's a coin. That's not going to be a cow tag, I know that. It's not a high enough number. Coming in at 68, 69 there. Are the cow tags on the Equinox 900 they generally come in uh, around the 87, 88, uh, 90, 91. All those funny uh, different numbers. I said to Andrew, if you're looking for them on the Equinox 800, how you ideally are digging from about 27 to 32. Uh, on the Equinox 900, about 87 to 92. And uh, that is where you're going to be finding the cow tags. So not to be, not a coin that one. And uh, look out, we did not even need the pinpointer. I seen him straight away. I said defeats the purpose of uh, turning the pinpointer on and using it. Uh, but we will need him today. Uh, we will need him a lot as we're going to dig out a lot of targets at this site and chase those coins. So look out, the brand new ProFine 40 by MindLab. What a ripper. So as many will know, I absolutely love my little bottles. And uh, there is our first intact, complete bottle uh, coming out from this site. In the last three digs, or two, uh, two digs prior and today, uh, we have not found any bottles at all. Uh, a bit of glass uh, smashed in the ground with the lead and the bone, uh, indicating the old bottle dumps. However, digging further, uh, we've not come across anything, uh, anything intact, and, and, and very little uh, broken glass. You know, a lot of this sort of stuff, uh, but no, you know, halves of bottles or uh, broken necks or anything like that. So, uh, look, it's a bit, uh, bit confusing. Where is all the bottles? Where is the majority of the bottles, I should say? I'm sort of thinking, uh, down in the gully there, is where they'll be. Well, we have found our very first exciting signal to dig uh, with the, uh, the Equinox 900 here. And as you can see, uh, we are chasing cow tag numbers and coins. Uh, but look, those high signals is really where it's at. And uh, this is also going to be our very first good target on film uh, with the brand new ProFine 40, giving you guys a look at what it can do and how it hits on those targets. Uh, this is a this is a cow tag. We may need, not even need the um, the pinpointer though, because uh, generally once you flip the plug open, uh, you can spot them quite easily. Which I'm not seeing him. Where is he? He may not be a cow tag. So let's reach for the trusty 40, not the 35 anymore. The 40. How awesome! Love the red too. Oh, there he is, over the back there, hitting hard. Nice. You hear that wind starting to come in too. And uh, by lunchtime, we're expected to have a lot of rain. Oh, not a cow tag, but that's also what I wanted to target on today. The coins, because we have not found too many here in the past. So awesome, awesome. And look, the ones that we have found here in the past, 
are showing some great age. This would be only about the second rue penny coming out from this site. Everything else has been early 1900s and even two old English Britannia pennies dating back into the 1850s, 1860s. So awesome, awesome. First coin on the board with the Profine 40. What a ripper. And he hit on him so nice and hard. Awesome, awesome little unit. Let's put him back in the pouch, don't lose him. We put the coin in there too, as the, not to lose him. So, and then let's keep going on to the next target. He was a bit of a small target too, so I wasn't expecting a cow tag. However, those high numbers got me super excited. Hey, Andrew, we just nailed our first coin. Woohoo! And this was another ripper sounding signal, coming in at a 63, 64, almost like a $2 coin would. And, uh, wouldn't expect to find a $2 coin out here though. More so, pennies, silvers, who knows, said Andrew, maybe even a gold sovereign are coming out from this site. So there we go, not a $2 coin, not even a coin, an old bottle top. So who knows, we may be starting to hone in on the dump and target in on where those bottles may be. Because uh, look, I'm a detectorist uh, through, through and through, uh, and I love anything that comes out of the ground, a coin and, uh, you know, metal related, a coin and relics. However, the bottles is a big part of that for me now. Over the years, I've collected hundreds of bottles, and my last count, I'm well over 600 old bottles uh, that I've saved from the ground once again. So anything that comes from the ground, uh, history-related, old-related, uh, I'm all for it, and all for saving. So the bottles are also now a big part of it. Hey, Andrew, can you hear that? You can hear that? What's that sound like to you, mate? <laughs> Short, sharp, clear, high tone, as you can see, 96, oh that could be a cow tag, number 13, and right before the eye of the storm, uh, because uh, I tell you what, I'm starting to feel a lot, of, uh, a lot of drops of rain on the back, so let's have a look what we've got, oh here comes Andrew, <laughs> what are you coming over to look at? Oh, your tag man. Oh, hang on. Oh, hang on. That is a, that's quite the hefty cow tag, isn't it? <laughs> if it was a cow tag, it would not be banging against the stainless steel tiger shovel, that's for certain, and damaging it. That there, my friend. <sighs> I got so hopeful then. Yeah, so I come over though. It sounded loud and crisp. Uh, 96, 97. Yeah, that was, right. that was perfect for a cow tag. And look what's coming for us too. We've got uh, the eye of the storm, as I said, the, the wind is cold. Uh, and it, look, there's a big storm coming today. So by about lunchtime, uh, we're expected to have about 10, or 10, 15 mil of rain. A lot of rain. What they say, 70% chance and only about six degrees. Yeah, six degrees already. <laughs> oh dear, we're keen for the cow tags, aren't we? And we're not finding them. Well, that storm is coming, I tell ya. But that's okay, because check that bad boy out. We might have another cow tag. And Andrew is none the wiser. He's, uh, he's way over there well out of earshot so i can't even yell out how excited i am over this uh over this signal let's just dig it out let's just see what it is first and then we'll yell out how cool it is so we've got a bit of uh, concrete foundations over there too in front of us which i am heading over to as we speak because i'd like to check out what is going on over there oh dear that's a huge cow tag that's a huge bessie look at that now that is a solid, hunky chunky piece of brass. No wonder he's coming up at a 93. Oh dear. Oh, that's awesome. Alworth. So an old uh, old pipe. You see the old um, the handle, the shaft would come up and there would have been like a tap handle, like a round handle, and we would have switched the valve off inside. So wow, that's huge. That's, uh, well, look, it could go in the pouch. But it's probably gonna weigh it down and rip it again. Some will remember that I, uh, I ripped my pouch there the other week. Uh, hunting here just the other day I should say and uh, look at that Luke can sew amongst other things uh, you know I'm, I'm pretty well talented so there we go mum taught me how to sew not a very great job but it's gonna gonna do the job anyway it's gonna hold that pouch in place we're gonna have to walk this one over to the house and uh, put him on the back step it's not something I want to uh, discard or throw away and let's face it I've dug it out of the ground I've found it that's not how I roll if I find it I take it with me not only that, that's probably about, uh, look, a couple of dollars worth of brass right there. Brass is about $9 a kilo, 
and as many will know, I save, sort, and uh, and scrap all of it about uh, about a couple of times a year, and I make about a thousand dollars fuel money every year just through my uh, my brass, my copper, uh, my lead, and my alloy cans and bottle tops. So, and if you have not seen the video where we turn the trash into a bit of money, uh, I'll throw up top left corner, go forth and check it out. We make about four or five hundred bucks. Uh, or a couple hundred bucks at least, I can't remember the exact amount uh, but look we're going to go do a scrap run very soon and these are the sort of pieces, as I said, that we save, sort and scrap and uh, get paid for so what do you reckon Andrew, nice cow tag? Yeah, I like this cow tag 92, 93 mate on the, uh, on the Equinox 900 not to be, but that's okay uh, who knows, there may still be one more and uh, let's face it, we're probably being a bit greedy aren't we? 12 tags and here we are are wandering around expecting to uh, find more so not to worry let's get back over the tech and let's go check out those concrete foundations that we found over the back there well we're just standing here checking out this concrete foundations the new concrete foundations that we just found and there's uh, there's a little bit going on as you can see however uh, what i've sort of uh, determined uh, the best of uh, best of my knowledge uh, this is an old sheep run an old sheep dip uh, so there might have been a little shed attached uh, with that concrete foundation there or maybe even like a little shack or a shed here attached and uh, as i said the sheep would have ran through here and been dripped and drenched so very very cool it actually looks like there's a few sheep that have been stuck in there i'm just sort of looking for bottles too seeing if there's anything old I can't spot any glass or, or anything. So where are all the bottles? It is a mystery. And uh, I said to Andrew there before, I'd really like to hit on them. So the only one uh, one place I am thinking they could be is down in that very swampy, a uh, bit of a gully where the land really drops off and flattens out there. And as you can see, the old train line that used to run through there, and they've built the embankment up. If they built, built the embankment up there, that tells me that it was a very, very swampy area. And they're trying to keep the train tracks up on nice dry ground so that's where we might walk around and just see if we can f uh, find any fragments of glass or broken bottles or anything of that nature so and look out here comes the rain well we've done it we've made it back up to the house and nearly uh, we just went for a walk down to the railway there and that really swampy area however no signs of glass no nothing so I'm really confused as to where the bottle pit is still uh, all we seem to be getting out of the holes when we dig up around the house is just small uh, little tiny pieces of glass like this i'm just wondering where all the broken bottles are where all the uh, the majority of it is anyway uh, coming back up to the house so we were rewarded with a nice little uh, signal a 56 and a 57 i thought it to be a penny however i'm sort of thinking that to be an old anzac pendant i have not cleaned him up just yet you can see the little ring at the top uh, so he's definitely a pendant and uh, i'm thinking as I said, a little Peace and Victory war pendant. We've got a bit of water up at the house there, uh, laying on the sheets of tin. So what we might do is just gently, gently clean him in the grass. And when we get back to the house, we can do a better job. And yeah, he is too. He is too. So he's going to be a four king and country Gallipoli Anzac a landing pendant. So very cool, very cool. But as I said, when we get up to the house, we will clean him up a little bit further and uh, give you a better look, especially at the end of this video. So, wow, it's cold, wow, it's wet, and everything is super muddy, uh, super dirty. So we're really putting that, uh, that brand new 40 through its paces, aren't we? It is disgustingly dirty. And look at the speakers, they are not filling up. And uh, the, uh, the pinpointer is sounding off nice and loudly. So how awesome is that? With, uh, with also the rapid retune I've been using today, that's uh, quite a handy little feature, quite a, uh, quite a handy little unit in general so let's keep getting him dirty let's keep using him putting him through his paces and see how long it lasts and see how well it works well I must say that was quite the interesting dig the first target I got was a high signal and as you can see we are rewarded with another wonderful old stirrup and we found the last stirrup the matching stirrup uh, just a little bit over past the fruit tree there and I also seen the glass with an M on the base and then uh, we got a paintbrush, an old paintbrush, out from the same hole. Uh, but look, what I'm noticing too is a lot of, uh, lot of other glass and burnt off rubbish and, uh, you know, just that discolouring in the ground, plus rusty nails. And so who knows, we may be on to the old rubbish dump. But it sort of doesn't make sense why it's out the front of the house here. Uh, how awesome is that guy? Our matching stirrup. Giddy up. We can go, uh, we can go riding our horse now. 
Oh no, they don't fit. I got big feet. <laughs> big feet means big shoes. Damn, I can't go riding my horse. And never mind, that is still a great piece though. And we did slightly hit him up the top there, not to worry because he will clean up great. And as I said, a matching pair with our other stirrup that we got from the other day. So we can put him on display. He'll look, uh, he'll look awesome. So I was just sitting here pinpointing that next target. Now the rain is really starting to come down too. I hear someone yell out from around the corner. Something about a cow tag. <laughs> oh, let's hope. Fingers crossed. Where is he? What do you got? Oh, you had enough of the rain already? <laughs> it's getting horrible, isn't it? What do you got? What do you got? What do you got? What do you got? Show me! Show me! Show me! Show me! Show me! <laughs> oh, you bloody ripper! Where was he? I was only just there. What are you doing to me? <laughs> oh my God! Colac one. Oh, there we go. And once again, as I said the other week, these are found in the southwest district or the western uh, district. Uh, but I was sort of wrong there too because when I was speaking to my collector the other day, uh, who has well over 100 of these, he said, mate, look, they go well outside of Victoria, right up into uh, South Australia and New South Wales. Uh, they all had cow tags. So registration purposes, making money for the Shire, uh, the wonderful old uh, cow registration, uh, cow common tags. Well done, Andrew. Well done, mate. I've snagged a few coins. Nothing uh, in between. You got a coin? Yeah. What sort? Uh, a round one. Round one? <laughs> it's not a square one? No. Is it a penny or something? Yeah, a penny. Yeah, okay. Well, I've got a couple of pennies, a way penny, and a couple of little two cent coins. Nothing that special, though. I was really aiming for that cow tag. Oh, you got a full Commonwealth. There we go. And a cow tag. Andrew is smashing me with the 800. Well done, mate. Well done. Oh, he's got a little um, cone-shaped little brass piece there. Yeah, Probably a little uh, little decorative topper. Yeah, no doubt. So, just in time for the rain too. Yeah. How you can retire now, mate. You can give up. You can oh, go. One more day, <laughs> you go sit and have some lunch. Oh, that's awesome. It's a pretty nasty day, as you can see. And we're going to continue trying our best, though, and see if we can't both score a cow tag before we get out of here. But look, if we don't, that's okay. Because what's that? Thirteen. 13. Lucky 13. Lucky 13. What a winner of a sight. What a winner of a day. Let's keep cracking along. Big coin. It is a big coin, and uh, I'm thinking that is going to be an English Britannia, Andrew. Oh, no, it's not. A Commonwealth. There we go. 1912. Once again, showing some great age to this site. And uh, that pinpointer had no issues hitting on him. So, awesome stuff. 1912. Com Penny, straight after the cow tag. I just need to uh, need to find something a little bit bigger. Uh, God, we're getting wet too. I uh, I feel sorry for you, Andrew. You don't have the wet weather gear on, mate. Yeah, that's right. Five minutes and you're home in front of the heater. Uh, yeah, yeah, and and drying off. Uh, I've got about a 15, 20 minute drive to get home. But uh, yeah, look, I'm in the wet weather gear, so I'm okay. So apart from the gloves getting wet, the boots getting wet, the phone getting wet, I'm nice and toasty and dry. Rightio, so last coin before we stop for a bite to eat. Andrew's already tucking into the sandwiches. He must be hungry. I'm getting the same. We've done a lot of miles today in search for those cow tags and the coins. What is this? What is this? What have we got? It's a little terminal out of something, I'd say. Not a coin, but a little nice high signal. One of those brass signals that we generally try and chase. Looking for the coins and the silvers. Anyway, lunchtime now. Get out of this rain, stop for a break. Well, we don't need the pinpointer for this next target. Uh, look how dirty it is too. Absolutely filthy uh, for its first adventure out. Uh, but look at that for our next target. We've got the whopping big ax head. Don't ask me what made me dig that signal either. He was a very choppy, a very, very funny signal. Uh, but look, the axe head is pretty cool. Uh, just, as, uh, just as well as, um, uh, just like the old horseshoes too. I just love finding them. So, and I have quite a collection of these at home now. And uh, one day I'm just going to uh, put up a post on Facebook who is interested in some old axe heads and horseshoes because I have bucket loads. So that was a pretty cool target. Not one that we needed the pinpointer for. And as you can see, we are really putting it through its paces today. Every time I pull it out of the pouch, I just look at it and go, 
Ew, it's, uh, it's first day out, it's first voyage, and look at how we're treating it. Well, Andrew's got our next piece for us to show off, and uh, that is the old Thames horse float, the little, uh, little Lesney toy car. So he's awesome, he's a ripper, and I've actually got uh, the exact one of these at home in uh, in pretty much brand new condition. Yeah. He looks uh, looks amazing. He's got the wheels, the chassis, the front cab. Uh, it's just amazing. So pretty certain they're called the little Thames horse float or Thames truck anyway. Uh, but look, 1950s, 1960s, Lesney toy car. Uh, that is just a part of it. But uh, once we get home, uh, we'll show off uh, the matching the matching guy and show what he's supposed to look like. What a ripper! A little Lesney toy car or part of so moving on from andrew's ripper little toy car the little lesney as i said we're going to show off uh, the one i've got at home uh, when we get home uh, once we get home and uh, clean ourselves up too a nice uh, nice hot coffee nice hot shower is required i think uh, because it's a very very cold day digging today i tell you what andrew i was thinking before what are we doing with our lives mate <laughs> what are we doing out in the paddock uh, digging holes in the rain oh anybody would think we're mad uh, but look uh, the, the the coins and relics yeah, the coins and relics definitely are worth it especially when they're coming out from great sites like this uh, we've had a lot of fun today and last week so let's see what this guy is he's a fair way down actually quite a deep target let's go after him a little bit more we'll come back and give you a look Oh, we don't need the pinpointer for that guy. We dug down a little bit further, and there he is, the yellow bottle top. Quite a deep depth, too. So, look, uh, got a coin that time. We are going to finish up very soon. I just said to Andrew, I've uh, got a call off uh, Helena, and Dominic is not well at school. Uh, so we best go get Dominic very soon and uh, finish this day up. But before we do, I'd ideally like to get one more coin or something, something good uh, before we leave this site. So we're going to try our best and see... Here we go. And we've finally done it. Since lunch, we've been looking for that next coin. I remember we had the pendant coming out, uh, which we're still yet to clean up and have a look. He's sitting around uh, with the lunch bag, around the back step there. However, since lunchtime though, we have been looking for that next decent target to dig and uh, hoping it would be a coin. Well, there he is. That is our first since, uh, since this morning, 1952 Rue and in cracker condition. Funnily enough, he sung up just like a cow tag would too. A ring up around the 89, 91, 92 target ID range. However, it was a bit small uh, and there's a lot of other mixed in uh, targets around it. So, wasn't confident, uh, but I was confident it was going to be something good. And uh, we were rewarded with a coin. So, awesome stuff. Hey, uh, keep cleaning this pinpointer off too because uh, I don't like to see it dirty. It's filthy. And as I said, it's its first voyage out today but it's doing a fantastic job. Let's keep going. Another 10-15 uh, minutes, see if we can snag one more good item, and then it's home time. So listen to that guy, would ya? 89 on the nose, sort of. He's jumping around a little bit. Uh, but look, that is the signal once again uh, that I chase at these old house sites because you could spend days here hunting, uh, digging everything. Let me just give you a bit of a listen. There's a lot in the ground. So between the rust, all the other items, the rubbish, uh, there is a ton uh, to work through. So as you're humming along, listen for those high tones, because that's generally where the good stuff's at. Keg taps, cow tags, coins, it's all there. This could be another coin, and uh, this is going to be our very last dig before we pack up and get out of here. Everything is filthy dirty. Look at the shovel, look at my gloves. And I will say too, uh, just quickly show you, that pinpointer hole had no hope of not filling up with mud and water, especially with how dirty we are today. Look at us. We are just absolutely caked in mud. So uh, look, I've got high hopes that um, normally, generally that speaker would not fill up as much as, uh, as much as, or as quick as it did today. Uh, but uh, it's just the conditions we're hunting in, isn't it? So what is that? That's not a coin. That's not a cow tag. It was a solid 91 on the Equinox though, or 89, 90, 91. So not to be, not to be. That's not what we can finish off with. We've got to finish off on a bit better of a high than that. But let's go after one more target and see if we can do it a little bit better. Well, I think we're in a hot spot for the high tones at the moment because here is another one, 91, 92. Could we be catching up to Andrew and getting our first cow tag for today? 
and not to worry if we don't because uh, let's face it we've got a lot in the past we dug five here just last week oh, what is that what is that is that a little baby stirrup I've never seen anything like that let's see if he fit my boot this time <laughs> not a hope not a hope in the world is that a wee little baby stirrup I think it is he's got the uh, the hole where the leather strap would go through oh that's cool that's cool hey Andrew you got small feet we found your stirrup a wee little baby one <laughs> awesome <laughs> it is small it's uh it's that oh actually you're tiny you fit inside the horseshoe <laughs> knock come knock in. knock come in <laughs> come, in. <laughs> uh, come out hey we're coming out of the house well that's about it for us today here guys as I said we are going to share a conclusion at home and uh, show also uh, that awesome little Lesney uh, Thames horse float vehicle that Andrew got because I have a complete one in my collection and uh, I'd love to give you a look at exactly what he what he used to look like so look, we were testing out the Mine Lab Profine 40 pinpointer today. We had a ripper of a run with it. And as you can see, let me just take him out to light there. And as you can see, he is quite dirty. We really put him through his paces. The speaker filled up full of mud and water. And not to worry, it still sounds off nice and loud. Let's give you a listen. So perfect, perfect. Look, as I said, we're going to get home. We'll clean up all our gear, pinpointer included. And uh, we're going to lay everything out on the step. I'll show you a look exactly at what we found hunting here today. Before we do, though, where's your finds, Andrew? Because if you go home and I go home, right we're not going to get to see what Andrew found. So let's have a bit of a look, Ski. And uh, as you can see, uh, we've got uh, the cow tag, Kola cow tag, the only one that I've ever seen worn all the way through. I wonder how he lost it. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder. A one cent coin, and uh, Andrew's also got himself... A Commonwealth penny there, very hard to read the date, uh, but one for him to clean up when he gets home. A few other little doodads, bits and pieces, uh, bits and bobs, and uh, even the old buckle, a little brass buckle. So, And uh, funnily enough, a little bit of twisted brass, which is exactly uh, like what we found hunting there down by the river with nibbles. Uh, funnily enough, we're nowhere near him, nowhere near nibbles. So I wonder how he's going, out in the paddock by, by, him, by himself in the rain. The poor bugger. Oh, the poor bugger. He needs an apple. <laughs> anyway, guys, that's about it. I said we're going to show you what I did at home. Once we go get Dominic, we'll clean up all our gear, and uh, we will see you there. Well, welcome back to the shed there, guys. We have made it home, and uh, I'm a happy man because I've got Pooh Bear with a hot coffee, and uh, I've got the fire lit. I've got Dominic at home. He's nestled away in a blanket, tucked away watching cartoons. And as I said, I wanted to get home dry and warm. So we've had a shower, changed clothes. Uh, it's been a wet and windy wild day. So I'll just give you a quick look over my wet weather gear here. It is cheap gear. Uh, I did actually purchase it from Aldi's. Uh, it is crane branded. Uh, it's snow gear. Uh, so it's not actually like, you know, waterproof. It's waterproof, obviously. Uh, but it's not meant for, you know, like going out in the rain per se. It's actually snow gear. Uh, however, it works great for what I do. It is wind resistant, water resistant, uh, waterproof, obviously. It's snow gear. Uh, but look, it is cheap. It's from Aldi's. Everybody's got an Aldi's near, near them somewhere. Uh, so look, look out for it in the catalogue. I think the pants cost me about 40 bucks. Uh, they do come with the other uh, straps uh, to stick up around you. So you look, they, they're heavy when they get wet, but with the straps, they're not too bad. And uh, the jacket there, I tell you what, that's a new addition, and it keeps me super warm. So about 50 bucks for the jacket, 40 bucks for the pants, 10 bucks for the digit detecting stitching, $100 all up, and we can go out on these wet, wild, windy days and enjoy ourselves. It does not matter, rain, hail, or shine. So, look, we do have a lot of uh, messy uh, equipment to clean up, though. The pouches included, the pinpointers, the gloves, the detectors, uh, even, uh, look, even my boots and everything, they're just... <laughs> my uh, my boot in included in my car uh, there's just there's just mud everywhere so that is the only disadvantage on going out on these days however you can still enjoy yourself and get out there with the wet weather gear on and hit on all these wonderful finds all the rubbish up the back as i said and uh, all the items the big items uh, like this guy that we dug that we're going to be scrapping in future and uh, making money off so look let's face it if you dig it out of the ground uh, cart it out of the site uh, you know Make sure you cut it out of sight because um, if you find it, you're going to get paid for it. If you take the effort to uh, take it with you 
uh, scrap it, sort it, save it, and uh, we'll sort it, save it, and then scrap it for future, you're going to get paid for those larger brass items. So we've probably got about 10 bucks worth of brass here today, uh, which will cover the fuel. So awesome stuff. Thinking ahead, aren't I? Uh, we've also got the spigot tap there uh, broken at the top, which is probably why he was discarded, and uh, not one that we'll be discarding uh, ourselves, though. Uh, one that we'll be cleaning up in the tumbler and displaying for future, because I always love the keg taps and the spigot taps. I like the little wee baby tap up here beside him and we're going to be doing the same with that guy and we also have a little tiny stirrup now i just think that is a great piece i'm so so glad that we put the effort in today uh, and look we were nearly going to bail like i'd, I'd shot a few uh, clips and uh, look, it was a pretty hairy day. Uh, we were nearly going to bail out of there early. And today's video nearly wasn't going to happen. I would have just deleted those clips and, uh, you know, shot it again another day, restarted uh, this whole video another day and seen what we could hit on uh, for round three. But look, long story short, I'm really glad we went out. Little baby stirrup. We've also got the matching stirrup uh, to the mate that we found there the other week. And yes, he is broken at the top. And yes, I did hit this one too. But what a spectacular piece and uh, another one that we can display in the uh, in the cabinet for future. So a few buckles down below, including the one that Andrew gave me. Thanks, Andrew. Uh, you could have gave me the cow tag, mate. <laughs> what a ripper. I'm just joking. That is a, that's one for Andrew. And look, he deserves it. So out there in the wet and the cold with me, he did not have the wet weather gear on like me either. So he was like a sponge soaking it up all, all day. Uh, but look, he deserves it. You get out there, you put the effort in, you dig it, you deserve everything you get, and I'm all for it. So a mystery coin, this one, just looking, we have a little half penny, a little copper guy. And we're never going to know what he is, are, are we? It's a mystery. We can't see nothing. We're not going to pick these next ones up. I was going to. However, it's a 1943 Rue Penny, a 52 Rue Penny beside him in cracker condition, and a 1912 Commonwealth of Australia Penny, which I just love. And uh, that has been what has a lot, uh, you know, a lot of the coins that have come out from this site thus far have been the early types. So to smack on two Rues today uh, is you know, a little bit funny because last week we got a lot of Commonwealth pennies and also the old English Britannias. So shows a great timeline especially with these two cent coins because these were introduced in 1966 and as I said if we were hitting on 1856 and 18 you know 1800s pennies there last week with Cohen and Andrew which was quite a funny day uh, to have the 1966 two cent coins there uh, that were introduced after the decimal changeover, it uh, shows some great timeline, uh, some great age, nearly 100 years, so or over 100 years I should say. Our last piece, or our second last piece to get to, let me focus him, uh, is the 1916 uh, for King and Country. Let me put him back down, I'm shaky. Uh, so we got the four King and Country 1916 uh, medallion pendant that were handed out to the school kids of Victoria. And these are just fascinating pieces. It's, uh, it's sort of hard to see against the wood, isn't it? Let me put him back on my shaky hands. Uh, so education or presented by the Education Department of Victoria, Anzac and Lest We Forget, and it's the 15th of April 1915 uh, when the Anzac troops landed on Gallipoli Beach. So a fascinating pendant and a fascinating piece of history. Now let's get to our very, very last find, and uh, that will be the little truck. And uh, I thought he was a Thames truck. I don't know where I was getting that word from. Thames, maybe there's another truck in the Lesney series uh, that is named that, but he's not a Thames truck. Uh, he's actually a little horse uh, horse float truck. So kind of partially right what I said there before out in the paddock. Uh, we'll flip over this guy, part of my collection, and you can see there uh, a Marshall Horse box, Mark 7, made in England by Lesney, number 35, a little ripper. I love them. I love them. I absolutely love them. Uh, the little Lesney toy cars. And uh, some will have seen my toy car collection. Uh, I did do a video on it uh, about a year ago. You'll be able to find on my channel. However, I have got a few more since then. Uh, so awesome little pieces, and I just love them. Uh, I'm just wondering, though, uh, where is the rest of Andrew's? He's lost his horses, he's lost his chassis, his driver, his truck. Uh, hell, he, he's lost everything. So awesome little pieces though. Uh, that, is, that is a great day uh, by anybody's standards. And uh, at the end of the day, as I said, wet weather gear on. Just get out there and enjoy it. So uh, like we did. So 
Anyway, guys, I really hope you enjoyed. Uh, we will be back again hunting this site and more for future. We've got a lot of permissions to get to, uh, too many to get to, and not enough time. But we will get there, and I hope to see you there. And if you did enjoy this video, uh, make sure to give us a like and a comment, because every like, every comment helps support my channel for future, uh, helps grow digger detecting for future, and I really, really, really appreciate that support. So cheers, guys. Happy hunting. And as I said, we'll catch you on that next permission.